Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach. Really excited about the video today. So today, I'm going to teach you the top 10 extra tabs that I would have before testing. Now you need to make sure that your area accepts tabs, and then also make sure that they accept, you know, find out what type of tabs they accept. A lot of the testing centers use the verbiage, must be fixed to the paper. So the method I'm going to teach you at the end of the video would technically be acceptable. It is in our area, just double check in your area. If you picked up a set of tabs from us, and we offer free shipping, I'll put a, uh, if you click this button up here right now, you can see the how to install these tabs video. Uh, it's an instructional video with a downloadable PDF with the instructions, and you could pick up your tabs for 14, 17, and 20 with free shipping from the Electrical Code Coach website. I'll put a link in the description below with free shipping. So when you order a set of tabs like this, it comes with a few blank ones. So I'm going to show you the top 10 extra tabs that I would have that are not listed in this. I don't know why they're not listed, but I found them to be very helpful for me. And if you stick around at the any end of the video, if you don't have these tabs, I'll teach you how to make your own tabs um, at the end of the video. So, And that's how I always did it was just making my own. But if you wanted to write small letters on this, you could. And then just peel and stick and follow the same directions in that video I just recommended. Okay, so let's go with number one. All right, so the number one that I would recommend is marking the high leg. And you could just write it on a piece that says like this, says high leg, okay? Or you could write it on here. And I would recommend making these tabs across the top, okay? These are your 10 special tabs, or you can make them across the bottom, whatever you're more comfortable with. So if you want to be able to see them better across the bottom, or you feel more comfortable with them out of the way across the top. So I would uh, mark the high leg orange. It's been on every single test from the what, what are equivalent of the journeymen's and the masters and uh, my inspector certifications. I feel like it was on both of them. So that is one. Um, it's marking the high leg. I would use that as number one. All right, so number two that I would definitely do is the, and you can put it on one tab and put dryer range. And the one tab will do the range table and the dryer table for demand factors, load calculations, and things like that. So that is the second one I would recommend. And I would put them right across the top, you know, on each respective page. And I'm going to teach you how to do that at the end. All right, so number three that I would recommend is clearances, conductor clearances for services. There is a services tab, but I feel like when I'm testing, testing and I have something about clearances, this is going to take you to all the different vertical clearance, normal vertical clearance questions. It's not pools or anything like that, but it's for services. So that's the third one that I would do. The fourth one that I would do, and I'm going to list these in the description below so you can check them all out. The fourth one that I would do is I would do table 250.102C1. I would name it bonding jumpers, okay? And I would definitely do this table. It's for your main supply side and um, other bonding jumpers. So I would do that as number four. Number five, I would recommend, highly recommend doing table 300.5. I would call it burial depth. And this is your table for all the different burial depths of pipe. Um, I believe this is the thousand volts or less. So Highly recommend doing this one. And let's skip on to number six here. This is one that I would personally do. Um, you don't have to, but I would. This is the uh, temperature correction factor table. You could put correction factors or whatever you wanted on there. When I'm flipping back doing ampacity and bundling adjustment and temperature correction factor tables, I find that in this code book, this is the 2017, you have to flip a couple pages. And you could almost put corrections and bundling adjustments because on the back side is the bundling adjustment table and on the front side is the ambient correction table and you have to flip all the way back over to 310.15b16 um, in the 2020 is 310.16 and you kind of you got you to gotta flip back it's a lot of flipping so if I've got these tabs on the top or bottom I can quickly move back and forth while I'm doing those questions alright so let's move on to the next one let's move on to that was number six I believe Five was 300. Yep, that was number six. So let's go to number seven. So number seven is one you definitely got to do. It's just call it duty cycle. This is for your motors questions and several motors. So this is really important for your, um, for your duty cycle for your motor questions. The next one that I would do that I'm really surprised that there's not a tab already for is the... Um, 
is the multipliers for breakers, uh, fuses, and everything when you're doing motor short circuit and ground fault protection. This is a table you're going to use on almost every test, especially master's test. So I really encourage you guys to do this table. Just call it short circuit ground fault or motor breakers, you know, whatever you want to label it. Uh, I would definitely do this table because when you're flipping over here to the FLCs, you get your FLC, you flip over here, your size in the breaker, you're flipping for two or three minutes trying to find this table because it's not labeled. So I would highly recommend um, labeling this table. And if any of these I mentioned already have a tab from Mike Colt, please excuse me. I don't believe they do, but if they do, uh, just roll with it for me. But these are ones that you're going to want to go out of your way to tab. I don't think any of the ones I've mentioned have a tab because I feel like I've always made one for it. So um, back in the day when I first started, I didn't have any money, so I made all my tabs. And that may be where you find yourself, my friend. Keep grinding with what you got until you get it. Listen, I used to make all my tabs with lined paper and scotch tape like I'm getting ready to show you here in a second. All right, so number nine that I would do, this set of tabs has a class one. I would mark class two. So when you're flipping real quick on your class uh, classification questions, you can flip right to class two. And then I would also recommend doing class three. So the Mike Holt tabs are... Um, and there's other tabs out there. These pretty much cover everything, but there's some key tabs that I would like to see on there. I've actually submitted some some different suggestions um, with, you know, before. We'll just leave it there. But with that being said, there, there's a few key ones missing. There's 10 that I feel like are missing, and the rest of them are pretty really... Um, you know, really accurate, really helpful. There's just 10 that I feel like we're missing. All right, so now let's show you guys how to make your own tabs. So say if I wanted to do the high leg, I'm back in article, I think it's 110. I feel like it's 110. Um, back, I didn't save my place here. I believe it's 110 right in here, workspace. Right there, 110.15. So 110.15 for the high leg. So say if I wanted to make my first tab, I did not have any of these tabs left over or it's too small for me, I would just write high leg, and I'm a terrible writer, you guys will learn that, and drawer, but I have, you, know, you just got to work your skills. So I write it on both sides. I take a piece of scotch tape, and I get it however long you feel comfortable that works, but typically around that long. I'll come up here. And I will start, this is my first one, I'm doing them in order. So my first one, I'm going to lay the tape down like that. And then I'm going to just stick the tab in there. Most testing centers, if it's fixed to the paper, they'll let you use it. Okay. And then I'm going to lay that in there like that. And I'm going to fold it over. Looks like I needed to do my scotch tape a little bit longer. So I hadn't made paper tabs in quite a while, guys. But you're going to want to do your tape a little bit longer. If you, if you do mess up like I did... I always just did that right there, and it'll make it strong. And if you wanted to go to the next one, you could just take it, do your tape a little bit longer, go to the next one, and you actually just lay the tape down first. The longer, you know, the longer the better, so you don't rip your pages. And then you'll come to your next one, so wherever you find your next one, just go to it, make it in line with that tab right there. So they go in order down through here. You might have to make them tight, count them out. I used to put little niche marks. I used to tab books top, bottom, left, right, probably over tabbed. But you can make 10 little niche marks like this and make sure you're going to hit. Okay, if you're not going to hit, you can put five on the top, five on the bottom, however you feel like. So, And then you'll just lay your next one like this. And that's how I used to lay them out with just a pen. You can lay them out and make sure you're going to be able to hit all 10 or however many you're wanting to do. You also can layer them this way. So I'll go ahead and make another one real quick and show you. You can layer them. So say if you get down to the end, and say you want them all on top, you get down to the end, you can just come to the next section, number four, lay your tape down right in line with this one, and you can just flip through your tabs like this. So it's, a, it's actually pretty easy. I used to do, let me show you guys what I used to do. On the bottom of the code book, I didn't, I didn't have these tabs, couldn't afford them, made paper line tabs just like that for the whole book the whole everything and across the bottom I would do every large subsection so this would be starting here would be one two three four all the way through the whole code book and straight down in a line right here I would do 110.15 110.20 110.30 110.210 you know and blah you know on and on and on and would literally tab the entire code book and I ended up giving those to to other guys so they could carry them on um, 
but I hope they've been given to someone else to give to someone else. But at the end of the day, guys, this is something that you want to get good at lightning fast. I'm getting ready to make a video where we explore all the different tabs and how they relate to your testing. So I'll get a uh, code book that's a little more cleaned up than this for that. But that's how you make them, and they go right across the top. You also can use these. These just peel and stick. So you pre-write it. I'll give you that tip. Pre-write it, and then you can just peel, and they just stick right there. And you, you can use them just like that. You can also stack those ones up and down. See how these ones kind of stack? You know, it's, it's fine. So just check your testing center. Worst come to worst, you go to the testing center, somebody, you know, flips out, just cut them off. Say, okay, just give me a second, I'll cut them all off. But I've never had anybody say anything, and we use PSI, but every area is different. So just check your area, guys. I want to see you win. If there's anything I can do for you in life or business, I just want to be here as a resource to you guys um, just to help you get where you're going just for the sake of seeing you get where you're going. I just am so excited and thrilled. I get messages almost daily now where someone's getting their license or someone's close. or, um, And I never want to see you guys fail. So take just listen to what I'm getting ready to say. I really, you know, a lot of you guys will call me and say, I missed it by one question or I missed it by, you know, one, two questions and I know what they were. I never want to see you guys fail. But the person you become... In, be in between try one and try two is worth the wait. Let me say that again. The person you become in between the grind of the failed test one and the second test and third test or whatever it takes, a lot of times, guys, the first test is just nerves. You're just in there. You're sick to your stomach. It's hard to test under those conditions. Then you double down and you come back. Honestly, I feel like the guys who fail one time – end up with a better advantage because they got to they gotta either decide they want it or they don't. So it took me three tries my first time on my first license. I, you know, paper tabs, no help like this whatsoever, and I just want to see you guys win. So you guys take care, and, uh, you know, just let me know if there's any way I can help you. Thanks.